Hi, it's your buddy Brad here. Today I am going to show you uh, a little uh, overview of using object mesh primitives and object mesh variations in J Wildfire. These things are, or these variations are new in the 3.0 version of J Wildfire. So we are going to start off with object mesh primitives. Um, it comes with a set of um, 25 primitive mesh presets that you can use. It goes everywhere, anywhere from a mana bulb like you see here, to cubes, to gears. There's a lot of gears. Um, and other base shapes that you can um, play around with. For this, I'm going to start off with just a cube. Um, one of the coolest new features here is the expandable params. If you just click on this arrow, it expands parameters to use, which is, is very, very, very extremely helpful. Uh, the only two that don't show up here are color map and displace map. I believe, yes. Those are the only two that do not show up here. And I will cover those in another tutorial. So, um... We have some scale options here where we can stretch our objects. To make them fit our needs, we can move them around. Now these Settings here, the subdiv level, subdiv smoothness, um, sm subdiv smoothness amount, and these other ones here, and the subdiv smoothness, I'm not exactly sure what it's, what that one is, uh, the full name. Um, the only one, uh, the, I'm sorry, the only two that you should really worry about are the subdiv level and the subdiv smoothness. Um, and if you do, uh, use them in only small amounts, um, or else uh, it can cause your object to go wonky. But if you want wonky objects, then feel free to experiment with them. Um, as I stated earlier, on a Sphere, basically it increases the amount of polygons, uh, I, I believe it's polygons, in an object. So if you just change this up to two, see, if you notice those little triangles, uh, you can see on the mesh. So if you increase that by two, it actually just a way of smoothing out the object. And then uh, displace amount, blend the space, um, and the co uh, blend color, I will also go over in uh, another tutorial. And also in a different other tutorial will be this receive only shadows um, param. Um, and that, like I said, will be in another tutorial. So, but you can also import your own meshes. By default, it gives you a cube. So if you, but if you, other than that, it has all these same uh, params as the other one. But 
The only one different here is object file name. And that is how you pick your own mesh. So you click on this, the gear symbol here to open up where you have your meshes. Um, and I believe you can also set that location under the preferences. Let me see if I can find it here real quick. <clears throat> yes, uh, Tina, it's under Tina Mesh Path. So you just uh, copy and paste where you have your objects on your computer. So we click on the gear. I'm going to use this one here. Mesh creature open. <coughs> now this happens quite often in J Wildfire is this mesh is very big. So it's actually there. You just can't see it. So, uh, and also sometimes it takes them, depending on the uh, size of the object, it takes a while to, for them to uh, show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down. Keep on shrinking, 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 until you see it. And also, um, they always almost show up upside down. So you can click on the YZ plane here. And if you rotate it, all you have to do is rotate it till it is right side up. And of course, it works just like any other a uh, variation with a triangle here. You move them around and adjust them like so. And just real quick, you can also add color maps to it. Now these are based on if the object comes with a texture of uh, some do some don't so if we click click on the texture now we have a textured uh, happy turkey Do a quick render here. And then you can render that out however you want. Um, and that is about it for working with meshes in J Wildfire. Until next time, talk to you later. Bye.